So what? This is Raymond. This is Raymond, who's a Shih Tzu, I understand. Who's made himself oh, look at, at home. He suddenly. Yeah. He knows when you mention his name. He's Raymond. a complete egomaniac. He's basically the Justin Bieber <laughs> of the dog world. <laughs> uh, the reason Raymond came into Emily's life is detailed in this really beautiful but also very funny book and very sad book. Everybody died, so I got a dog. And it's quite a subject to begin with. It, almost the book happened to you, didn't it? Yeah. And I thought, you know, the title, it's, you know, as far as spoilers go, I'm pretty much laying out the entire plot from the start. But I felt that I wanted to be honest in the book. And so I decided to start with the title. You know, this is what happened. And the first person who died was your dear sister. Was my sister, yeah. And I, I came from, I guess, an unconventional family, you would call it. It was quite a sort of bohemian, artsy um, family. And both my parents worked in the media. And so... You I, see, it's you and your sister here, uh, yeah. Rachel. Yes. We, I think we've got, your father was quite a big cheese in TV, wasn't he? Yeah, my father was actually the first man on colour TV. Although he always said to me, well, I think only sort of, you know, seven people were watching probably at the time. So there he but is, yeah. Yeah, he presented a show with Jane Bakewell called Late Night Lineup. So right. it was a fantastic... So there he is. Yeah, there and, he is. And he was on TV an awful lot. Yeah, he used to interview in the days because there wasn't much TV. So there'd be extraordinary people he'd interviewed. You know, he'd say, oh, yes, that was when I interviewed Grace Kelly. And I'd say, what? You know, and, <laughs> wow. you know, Malcolm and Wise and Barbara Streisand. And so it was incredible. But yeah, I, I think it's an exciting, fabulous family to grow up in. But um, sometimes the child of, I suppose you would call it an artist in some way, you know, you don't get that order and that sort of, more functional life. That, Is that, yeah, because you write really interestingly about how you saw other families and they had dogs and they were sort of normal and your family had, a, I think you said, a Chilean pianist sleeping on the sofa. Yes. And you're saying, when is this guy leaving? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'd walk down the stairs and go, who's this? He's a Chilean concert pianist. I'm, oh, OK. Um, but it was that kind of sort of chaos. And actually also, you know, like my parents would wake us up and my mum would say she'd come in with a cigarette, always with a cigarette. And the hair wet and saying, oh, darling, I forgot to tell you the Sex Pistols are filming in your bedroom today. You're going to have to get out. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So it was, you know, if that gives you an insight into what it was like. So I would look at families and I don't know what kind of families you grew up in, but I would call them dog families. They were my fantasy family and they had Tupperware and they watched things <laughs> like Life on, you know, they watched David Attenborough. David and Lee. Uh, yeah, they paid Monopoly and at Christmas they would watch It's a Wonderful Life and we'd watch a weird French film about adultery, you know, that was black <laughs> and white. And I think, why can't we be like the dog families? So that was my dream and that never happened for me. And, and when you say everybody died, it, yes. it, was, it was your sister was and my, your mother and your father. And my so. father, so my sister died first and she did join the dog families and she had, a, you know, two kids and, and um, a husband and she got, you know, she got the dog, called, a dog called Giggle. And then she died very suddenly, she was 43. And she just said to me one day, oh, I feel a bit fluey. And then, then she was diagnosed very shortly afterwards with stage four cancer. And she, I remember she just sort of said, but I can't, I've got, uh, you know, that's your reaction as a mother, I suppose. She had a 10 year old and a one year old. And so she died, I think it was just a week after her, uh, her daughter turned one, which was just awful, Jeremy. Yeah. But then my parents, they died within three years. So my whole family had, had gone. My mother had motor disease, my father had, um, died from a stroke and so I think it was awful but it sort of forced me to kind of start again from scratch because you have this idea that you know you, I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it when the time is right I'll get a dog I'll do this I'll write a book I thought well I don't have time actually because that's what happened to my sister and, and my parents so yeah so it um it, it, was, it was the worst of times. I've sort of tried to turn them into the best of yeah. times. No, and it's not. It's funny to, to describe it as funny in places, mm. or, but because but, what it deals with. But it is, oh, it's it, touching, I think, is probably the best word. The, you know, the, the passage that really got to me mm. was your dad. He's had mm. the stroke. He's not himself. No. And he's, he's dealing with the news of your sister's death. And he, sh he shouts out, the best one has died. About my sister, yeah. About, about you know, in other words, how do you feel about that? Um... It wasn't the best day of my life, <laughs> but but what I would, I've had better days. <laughs> what I would say is that obviously, you know, like Terry, I, I have a lot of therapy. <laughs> you have to after a moment like that. Mm. But I think I was able to ultimately, and if you have a good therapist, I think what you learn is forgiveness. And something I've learned, and it's my favorite phrase that I use a lot, and I know you'll know about this, Lucy, but it's the idea that everyone is guilty, no one is to blame. 
And I say that to myself all the time. So even when he does a poo on the floor, <laughs> you know, but it, I mean that and I feel that with my father that actually I think, I think he said it because he was, he was have, suffering from a, a sort of early onset Alzheimer's yeah, as well. Yeah. But I also think we say and do strange things at moments like that. And mm. I think what I wanted to do in the book was not to blame him, but to say, look, we're presented a sanitized view of death in movies. We think everyone behaves in a certain way. They don't. Mm -hmm. People say awful things. They do strange things, they argue, they fall out. And I wanted to have an open conversation about that.